Hi, everybody. Becky here. We have an exciting new episode for you featuring some of our favorite friends of the pod. In this episode, we chat about breastfeeding and touch on topics like undersupply and oversupply, postpartum depression and anxiety, birth trauma, and motherhood in general. If you're sensitive to any of those topics, please listen with care. And if you need to skip this one, we love you and we'll see you next week. Ramble. Thank you to Chime, BetterHelp, and Home Chef for sponsoring this episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of You Can Sit With Us. I am one of your hosts, Becky, and I'm joined by three very special guests today. We have Sarah, you know and love. She's been on the pod before. Hi. Thank you for having me. Of course, we've got Rachel. Hi. Our sweet angel. And we've got Joey. It's her first time on the pod, but what, she what, what? did skydiving with the Tri Mom. She did sexy photo shoots. You've seen her in the breastfeeding video. Mm-hmm. She is all over the place, baby. And of course, we've got our rainy on the ones and twos. Hello. Guys, we have a really special episode for you today because mm-hmm. you got the mommies. <laughs> Hi, mommy. Hi, mommy. <laughs> Hi, mommy. Hey, mommy. I'm, I'm, st- I'm still like, who? <laughs> Hi, mommy. <laughs> okay. our, our moms are coming on. <laughs> yeah. Mom, 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 yeah. mom. <laughs> Me? That's, that's so, my kid's thing. Joey's got the oldest children <laughs> among us. Why doesn't everyone go around? Mm-hmm. Say a little dash about yourself, a little dash about your kids, and then we'll get into the meat and potatoes of what this episode is about. We really divided the room between uh, one kid's two kids. Yes. Oh. Babies and, Babies uh, and yeah. teenagers, truly. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll go with, I would say, the most famous twins on the internet, other than the Olsen twins. Dude, <laughs> here's all I'll say about June and Poppy is a friend of ours' wife is a labor and delivery nurse. And a month ago, she delivered to twin girls named June and Poppy. And I want to call that out. Hashtag influence. (laughs) What? What? (laughs) They're trendsetters. Apparently. They're trendsetters. Um, June and Poppy are four years old, going on 13. Um, My name's Rachel. You know me. Hello. And I'm Joey. I'm an autistic chief marketing officer and mom of two kiddos. I have a five-year-old named Fox and a two-year-old named Romilly. And um, we are Rachel and I are convinced that Fox and June and Poppy are going to be very, very best friends. And so they're going to have dinner tonight. 100%. They are having dinner tonight. They're oh. the same age. They're going into the same like uh, class kindergarten. I don't know what that is. Class of like 2040 or something. Who knows? <gasps> um, and uh, we're going to turn them into BFFs. We've already greenlit the ice cream after dinner to yeah. further convince them. To seal them. the deal. Can you yeah. greenlight my ice cream after yeah. dinner as well? Why are you doing it? That. 4 45 p.m. Girl, nothing. <laughs> Henry and I will be there. <laughs> We're in. Oh, no, tacos and ice cream. <laughs> love, love tacos and ice cream. And last but certainly not least, our sweet, sweet Sarah Bonsignore. Um, Wait, I just introduced <laughs> myself. Wait, how old is your kiddo? Oh, uh, yeah, okay, well, yeah, yeah. How old is your kiddo? Fun, you know, fun fact about okay, your kiddo. Great, great, great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, um, I have a son named Julian, and he is one. He's just <gasps> over one. And you guys, he's wild. He's in the 98th percentile. He's massive. Um, <laughs> I pick up other babies, and I think, oh, whew, this is. <laughs> so light. I'm going to I'm going to hit the ceiling. Um he's huge um and walking and wild and uh very cute and silly um and is a giggle monster and um someone that babysits a friend of mine Julian sometimes and babysitted another friend of ours said um you have it harder. <laughs> <laughs> because he is now in my head, I'm like it's Catherine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our, we got a babysitter oh, recommendation yeah, no, from it's Miles and another Sarah. Friend, it's another friend. I, I, oh, sorry, I give her to everyone. Um, <laughs> but uh, she was like, he's everywhere. I was like, I oh, know, I know. But he's wild and wonderful, and, and he's um, sweet. He's, he's very so sweet. He's very sweet. <laughs> he's very sweet. But yeah, and Angel. And then if for some reason you're listening to this podcast and it's the first time you've ever listened to You Can Sit With Us <laughs> or heard of the Try Guys. Who's Becky? I'm Becky. And uh, I have a oh. seven-month-old son named Henry who was two months premature. So developmentally, we're rocking around five months. 
Um, but the reason I wanted to assemble these mommies and these specific mommies with me are you guys are some of the mommies that I lean on quite heavily. I text you all the time. I'm like, what do I do? What are your opinions? All of this. And you have been with me through my journeys with Henny. <laughs> and one beautiful journey that just, <laughs> I feel like that's how they always talk about it. A beautiful journey between mother and child that just ended for us was breastfeeding. Um, and, you know, they just did the breastfeeding video with the Try Guys. And we felt like there was just a little bit missing from that because there's so much the experience of breastfeeding. Like the video was very good, I think, at showing people the mechanics of breastfeeding and pumping. But there's there's so much more that couldn't be contained in, you know, a 30, 20 minute video. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought I'd gather my favorite mommies and we all have a pretty diverse experience with feeding our babies. So I thought we could just have a mom chat. Normalize well, moms talking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a good point that Sarah brought up right before this started was like, a lot of times people don't say the thoughts they're having. And then when you finally do, and you're like, God, I fucking hate this. Everyone's like, oh yeah, me too. And you're like, well, then why weren't you saying that to me? I'm just over here suffering alone. <laughs> Completely. So that's why I talk all the time about real feelings. And look, once in a while, people are like, that's crazy. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'm fair enough. Woo, okay, okay, I missed okay. it. But most of the time, I feel like people are like, I relate and I have that experience. So it's like, and I think like too, so this great thing about like female rage and stuff, I feel like we're taught and raised to be so polite mm -hmm. all of our life. And that comes into motherhood. And I'm just like, no. No. Yeah, you know, like I'm just gonna be my honest self, and yeah. like if I get like trashed, I know. And the way here, I was like, "Am I as gonna be as honest as I feel?" Because like you risk people being like, "Actually, that's not." I'm like, "Yeah, whatever." You know, rage like, is the right word. Though. Yeah, like yeah. every <laughs> single day, there's another thing. I'm like, "Why didn't nobody tell me this is so bad about yeah. painting?" Yeah, it's so mm -hmm. hard, and I think I just thought that when I became a mom, I'd be like. And then I'd be like a mom, you know, <laughs> like I'd be like doing my life and I didn't know I'd be like, ah, I'm a mom. Yeah. you know, and it's like these two images and, and you have both. But I think for breastfeeding, I was like, oh, it's going to be this beautiful thing. And I remember in college, oh, I have this memory. Oh, it's so hard. I was, you know, big women's studies my major uh -huh. admirer, and, you know, and so I was really like in the feminist movement in college and more militant than I am now probably. But I remember I was babysitting at the time and I was like, breastfeeding is so important and da 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 da. And I was what, 21? And the mom I was breastfeeding, she like couldn't. And I remember now, I like now it hits me like, mm -hmm. oh my God. I was like, well, it's actually really important. Like, <gasps> like, oh my God. The like, mom you were babysitting for? I was babysitting there, mm -hmm. like, kid. And I'm sure she must have been like, go to hell. You know, she's, yeah. if you're out there, I'm really sorry. Um, but I was she's just. She's listening right now. Yeah. She's like, she's followed you waiting for this apology. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my petty self. I would like be like 10 years later. Yeah. She's <laughs> clipping it, preparing the green screen on it. <laughs> she's uh, got the like, red lines. Then yes, coming for you. Yeah. But in that feminist movement, it was more like we're working, yeah. we're doing, and then plus like being mm -hmm. natural. And what happened to me is like, I got bonkers like you've never seen like mm -hmm. they were I would have my friends come over and I was such a mess I made them hold them that's disturbing my friends were traumatized your, your boobs Her my boobs, boobs. You ha your okay. bazoombas they were, were bazoombas you guys they were was, bazoombaing I was like <gasps> it was so like much for me and it was so hard were you I hated it yeah. prepared for your body to change in that way because of course the belly we all know no yeah. I mean I put on like 80 pounds so, like, it was, like, an out-of-body experience, yeah. you know, like, just being that. But I and I knew, I kind of thought it would be funny because I, I have big boobs, like, whatever. Yeah. yeah. But I didn't understand also waking up and then being so heavy mm -hmm. and then, oh. like, like almost, like, them making uh -huh. me fall. I felt like it was hard. It's you like know? you're carrying weights on yeah. top of you. And it Mine did not get as big as yours yeah. got. But my boobs got pretty big. And yeah. I used to tell people with Henny, it was, like, putting a bowling ball on a golf ball. Like, yeah. I was straight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was waterboarding and suffocating him at the same time. Because he was so tiny. he was so tiny. Yeah. And then the bending over and holding your boob up and moving it around and getting it in the right spot, it was so stressful. I remember one time being at your house and being like, 
we had never really talked about it, but it, like under my breath, I was like, do you, do you like this? <laughs> like, do you like, do you like this? Oh. And we were both like, no. no. <laughs> I was like, I don't. And there's this like huge pressure from society to be like, you'll love it. You're going to love breastfeeding. It's the way that you bond with your baby. And if you don't yeah. do it, you're not bonding. And it's this all this because extra pressure. Because once again, women's bodies are for controlling. Yes. Yeah. But is that the primary message that you got? I feel like I had a totally opposite experience because of the messages my mom gave me. So you felt oh. like going into breastfeeding or having a child that like the primary message is breastfeeding is beautiful. Yes. Like, and, like yeah. you're receiving. And, and I almost yeah. like a couple of my peers who were lovely and trying to help, but mm -hmm. they were like, don't give up. It's going to get better. You can like, anytime they're upset, you can, and I saw that for them, but I was like, it felt made me more upset because I was like, I, I'm not doing this as exhausting. And when I went to the pediatrician at two months, she's like, it's a slight benefit. And I was like, slight? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> like, why am I fucking killing yeah. myself? And I started then going like half formula, half, and then I stopped at like four months, just a little over four months. Mm -hmm. And then I felt free. But I still feel kind of guilty about it because I'm like, oh, it does seem like this wonderful experience. And it does seem like, but it just, it wasn't for me. You yeah. Know? Oh, but your experience. I'm, well, yeah. even while I was pregnant, my mom, she loves to give those cold, hard truths. <laughs> um, but she was just like, I tried to breastfeed you for the first three days. And it felt like you were slicing my oh, nipple yeah. open. Oof. And Oof. so she said that and she's like, I just couldn't do it. I was at the hospital crying all the time. And like by day three, you were 100% formula fed. Yeah. And she kept on being like, don't put the pressure on yourself because like, look at you. You're so good looking. Wow, that is so <laughs> a genius. That is so nice. You know, just so humble. She's like, even as I was going into the hospital, she like FaceTimed me and remember like, you don't have to breastfeed. I didn't breastfeed you. I don't know whether it was yeah. overcompensating for the fact that she didn't. Yeah. But she was just like, mm. it's fucking tough. So don't put it extra wow, pressure on so your But then nice. what did you yeah. do, Josephine? Oh, you know, I did the opposite. <laughs> I know. <laughs> she took her mother's yeah. advice, obviously. Yeah. None of us I, ever take our mother's advice. I really rebelled on this one. This <laughs> yes. is how, how I showed her. <laughs> um, I breastfed my first kid for two years. Oh, wow. Because I got it stuck in my head. I knew that it was going to be horrible. Yeah. But I was like, the World Health Organization says it's best to breastfeed for two years. And then I just like, you know, it was psychotic behavior on my part to be like, I have to do it for two years, no matter how hard it is and how horrible wow. it is for my mental yeah. health. But I didn't for the second. But did you, <laughs> did you enjoy it? And then, or it was hard or it was just the pressure of the I hated it from the beginning. Mm -hmm. like, oh my and God. I hated it all the way until. Ugh. Spring is a great time to get your finances back in order. It's a fresh start. Your tax returns are coming soon. Making progress with your money starts today. With the right checking account, this year can feel easier. Chime's online checking account has tons of benefits that millions of members love like fee-free overdraft of up to $200 for eligible members. Plus, get paid up to two days earlier with direct deposit, all while managing your money on the go 24-7. Chime has no monthly minimum balance or overdraft fees. You can overdraft up to $200 without fees with SpotMe when you set up a qualifying direct deposit. You can pay friends through Chime, Chime members or not, and cash out your money fee-free. Sign up for Chime today. Joining takes just minutes. Get started at chime.com slash sit with us. That's chime.com slash sit with us. Banking service and debit card provided by the Bancorp Bank NA or Stride Bank NA members FDIC. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Early access to direct deposit funds depends on payer. Out of network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. Our days are just really busy right now focusing on Henry and it's really hard to find the time to meal prep or even go to the grocery store. And that is why I'm absolutely loving Home Chef. They're different from all other meal kit brands. Home Chef provides fresh ingredients and chef design recipes conveniently delivered to your doorstep to simplify your cooking experience. Whether you prefer classic meal kits with pre-portioned ingredients and easy instructions, speedy recipes ready in less than 30 minutes, 
oven-ready kits with pre-chopped ingredients, or even quick microwave meals that assemble in minutes. Home Chef has you and the entire family covered for delicious meals without the hassle. Not only is it convenient, but it's economical too. Home Chef customers save an average of $86 per month on groceries. For a limited time, Home Chef is offering our listeners 18 free meals, plus free shipping on your first box and free dessert for life at homechef.com slash sit with us. That's homechef.com slash sit with us for 18 free meals and free dessert for life. Homechef.com slash sit with us. Must be an active subscriber to receive free dessert. I know. I actually, you should tell us how it made you feel about your own body because I've heard this story and it like, it revolutionized how I thought about the whole thing. I was like, oh my God, you're so right. Yeah. So, you know, both times with my kids, I did breastfeed, but with my second, I stopped around five, six months because it really, really sank in um, just how terribly I felt about breastfeeding. But, you know, I would breastfeed and have gender dysphoria. Like it wasn't just, oh, um, I'm sad about this or this is uncomfortable, but I would sit there like in disgust with the thought of having boobs. And I was like, I don't, I don't like this. I don't want to have breasts. Um, and I felt very unfemale. And so, um, in all of the times where my body performed the most female, like when I was pregnant, when I had to breastfeed, I was like, oh, I'm, I don't think I'm supposed to be a woman. Like this feels real, like I'm in the wrong body. And that was the first time that I actually considered like, I think that I'm non-binary. It was like a very big realization. And I would talk to my friends to be like, is it supposed to feel like this when you don't like it? And some people were like, oh, maybe you have Deemer. And I looked it up. I don't. What's Deemer? What's yeah. Deemer? I've never heard um, of that. I don't remember the the full name. It's an abbreviation for something. We mm-hmm. can look it up in a second. We can look it up now. But it is a hormonal um, reflex that happens that if you have like a whole like dip in serotonin yeah. because of the hormones that cause mm-hmm. you to lactate. And I think so, I had a little bit of that. Yeah. yeah. So some it's like women, the letdown, you get depressed. Yeah. Exactly. You and some people sadness. with the letdown, they get euphoric. Like your yes, hormones yeah. can go oh. kind of any which way, but a lot of women have a big hormone reaction while breastfeeding that can make them feel really like outside themselves, Mm -hmm. either like kind of manic euphoric or Mm -hmm. like super depressed. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not depressed. I just, I just felt non-female. Like I wanted to reject my female body. And you also with your second came out of a super, super painful pregnancy where you were incredibly yeah. sick the whole time. Oh. Um, which would also lead you to not want, you know, like to be pregnant. Yeah. Um, I had hyperemesis gravidarum where I vomited mm-hmm. every single day and was Ugh. nauseous nine to 10 hours um, every day. Which did you see? They're coming out with uh, a pill. I yeah, did. It's a, yeah. pro- it's a protein that you create yes. that's someone mm-hmm. great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank God they're doing something about it. But yeah. the combination. Because it was for nine months. It yeah. wasn't for like the first Jesus. 12 oh, weeks or whatever, God. which by the way, 12 weeks is incredibly long to be that sick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But in general, you know, your pregnancy can be really tough. Your childbirth can be really tough, as we know from a lot of women's, but especially Becky's story. And then breastfeeding, you know, for me, by the time it got to my second and I had two experiences of it, I'm like, this is really, you know, gender dysphoric. And I really don't want to do it anymore because how I feel about my own identity when I do it, as opposed to the physical discomfort or the exhaustion from it anymore. Yeah. It's so much more than the physical act of it. I was having success on producing milk. So I was pumping because I couldn't, the idea of Henny being on me and then like what I said, waterboarding and suffocating him at the same time, I was like, I can't. Like the idea of putting him on me was so uncomfortable. It like literally would make my body curl into a little ball. Um, and th- that's why I exclusively pumped for the first three and a half months of his life. Mm-hmm. And then I only switched to breastfeeding when the pumping got uncomfortable. And it was like, it wasn't like, oh, I I love this so much more. It got easier because he was bigger. Mm-hmm. And because I was more removed from that hospital setting of 
do it. You got to do it. There was the breast pressure. milk's so good. And Rachel, I feel like that's something yeah. you can speak to because you had a completely different experience feeding oh, yeah. your children <laughs> and did. the pressure that not only doctors put on you, but like your other mom friends, other well, people in your life. Crazy for people to assume anything about anyone ever and their bodies. Like mm-hmm. it's the year of our Lord and Savior, Barbie 2024, like stop assuming <laughs> anything. I once like, you know, was bottle feeding my babies at our coffee shop and someone was like, you know, you should really breastfeed them. And I was like, <gasps> you know, I had breast cancer twice. Jesus. So you can shove yeah. it up your ass. Oh my you know? God. Like you just can't, you just shouldn't like, what the fuck? No one needs your opinion. No. Did you I say that, that out loud? Them? Yeah, did I did. React? I really did. What I was, was a so reaction? mad. Yeah. What did she they say? They were like, I'm so sorry. And I was like, yeah, you yeah. shouldn't do that because I also feel filled with rage ever since having babies and my kids were little I was like no you're being an asshole I'm gonna make you feel yeah. so bad about yourself right now that was how dare you just come up and say something I also 10 years prior to that I was wearing my friend Jessa's baby on the subway in New York and uh 15 years prior to that mm-hmm. and bottle feeding her and this little granny comes up to me and was like you know you should really be breastfeeding and I was like she's not my child do you really <laughs> think I should still be breastfeeding <laughs> yeah <laughs> I know I when I was like wanting to quit and Miles was so supportive he's like Sarah just quit and then when you when you start weaning you start like hormonal so I was like crying like yeah. all the time you know I was just like mm-hmm. I'm so sick of crying yeah but Miles is like, just quit, Sarah. It's okay. Like, you know, but I was mm-hmm. holding on to this thing. And some of it is like, I don't know. I guess if I really, I how I am presented in the world I, is important to me. Yeah. And I remember like, well, what if I go to a restaurant and I have to form, fill the formula and people are going to look at me like, oh, she's a failure. Oh, God, it's so stupid. <laughs> oh. But, um, <laughs> so stupid. Um, I assume we're like, all going to cry at some point it, in this episode. Like, I, but I mean, it was it was fine, you know, but yeah. it was like once the doctor said like it was fine, I just like I mean, I had a hard time in the beginning anyways, but it was like I can't I just don't want to do it. And I felt yeah. like I yeah. was a bad mom if I didn't want to do it. And the other moms that were trying to be nice were like, just keep going. It gets easier. It gets easier. And it that's can't. not everyone's experience. Yeah. 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 And you're not stupid. Yeah. The societal pressure is what's stupid. And the yeah. fact that moms breed all of these insecurities about themselves and like failings as a mother because of other people's opinions is fucking bullshit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the fact that you felt insecure about that is a result of that and not because of your own stupidity. Yeah. So, and, you know, on the other side, okay. I also was like, ew, I don't want to breastfeed in public. Like, I'm yeah. down for everyone breastfeeding yeah. in public. Like, pull those puppies out. Like, I don't <laughs> care. But, like, I didn't want to. And I yeah. think because maybe the size, it was like, how could you not take a double take at those things? <laughs> like, yeah, the baby. restaurant was going to stop. <laughs> like, like, as progressive it as it was, yeah, it was yeah. going to be. I mean, poor, you know, like, yeah, poor Miles' parents saw beautiful. a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> they were beautiful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, honestly, um, this woman on my street was so nice. When after I had the baby, I feel like everyone's coming up to me going, oh, are you in bliss? And I was like, no. <laughs> no. no. You know, this is hell. And then this one neighbor, she was so great. She looked at me and she went, how you doing? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I was like, oh, I was seen. And then she was like, I was like, I'm having trouble with breastfeeding. She's like, quit. That baby went straight to the bottle because I wanted a night nurse and slept the night. She's like, I saved yeah. up for three months of night nurses and did <laughs> straight to the bottle. And I was like, what? That's so cool <laughs> of you. Yeah. You know, because you feel like you're like, I, don't, I felt like doing formula was like giving your kid Diet Coke. You know, you know what I mean? Like it was like yeah. fake, like not as good, you know. And I was also, my mom had to go back to work. And then that time, women didn't have pumps and stuff like that. Yeah. So my mom went back to work at six weeks and I had to be formal because they didn't have that, yeah. you know. And now it's like, you know, this different pressure, you know. Oh, yeah. But look how gorgeous and yeah. you're a little of a genius <laughs> and, you know, amazing yeah, exactly. you are yeah. now, yeah, even yeah, though yeah, you're a formula. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bed. yeah. I am. Um, a friend of mine was having trouble with her kid and losing weight and blah, blah, blah. And I reached out to my friend Jessamine, whose baby was the one I was wearing on the subway, whose baby is now 12. And um, mm-hmm. I asked her, because I remember her going through the same thing when her baby was an infant. And I was like, what would you do here, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, oh, 
I can't even remember. Those early traumas, they don't matter. And yeah. they do matter at the time. But yeah. she was like, oh, right. That thing we went through where my baby was losing weight, you get over it. And now you have a 12-year-old kid who's running around functioning. And it's like, there are only so many decisions you get to make about this new little life that you're in charge of. And it's really mm -hmm. overwhelming. But by the time your kid is 12... Unless there is like some sort of illness or genetic thing you're dealing with, of course, there are exceptions, but like a lot of this fades away mm -hmm. and you won't, we're all traumatized because we're so close to it, but the trauma evaporates over time as they grow up and they walk and they talk and they go to school and they have ideas. And it's like, right, whether I gave them formula or donor milk or breast milk, doesn't actually matter anymore. It mattered yeah. because it was one of like six decisions I got to make about them. And we put so much on ourselves, but like they're going to grow and thrive. You're feeding your baby. That's yeah. what's so important. I mean, we know? were just talking about this outside where when breast milk or formula are the only things they eat, it seems like such a huge decision. But like mm -hmm. fast forward to a one-year-old or a two-year-old or a five-year-old, you know, I was just saying like my two-year-old only wants to drink bath water now, like just dirty <laughs> soap. She'll like lay in the tub and go. Blah, 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 blah. And it's like, why was I worrying about formula or not when like she's just going to eat garbage for the yeah. rest of her life? <laughs> like that's her totally, favorite yeah. flavor. Well, I also think, you know, like someone like myself or my friends Alex and Ross were over with their adopted eight month old this weekend and they are, you know, gay dads. It's like, do you think they're giving their babies trash? No, of course you would never yeah. think like, how dare you? How dare yeah. you do that to your baby? Because they don't have other choices. So why would we look in the mirror at ourselves and say, how dare you? Yeah. You know, well, and it's also worth told. <laughs> yeah. I feel like we were told from so many people and like I considered our pediatrician. She's not our pediatrician anymore because she had to take some time off. But I really <gasps> loved her. She was like phenomenal. She's very kind of like loosey goosey. Never said anything that truly upset me. Whereas I feel like other doctors said things that really made me upset. Um, but when Henry started losing weight, mm -hmm. she was like, well, what are you eating? What's your diet? Are you exercising? Like mm -hmm. asking me all these questions about like how I lived. Mm -hmm. And she was like, yeah, your milk's probably not as fatty anymore. And mm -hmm. I was literally like, oh yeah, that's, okay. I was like, oh, I'm just, I'm, I'm giving him subpar food. Mm -hmm. I started giving him more formula. Cause I was like, I can't I'm not making this for you. Mm -hmm. And it was at the cost of like, I am exercising more. Mm -hmm. I am, you know, eating healthier. She was like, well, what were you eating when he was first born? I was like, ice cream, candy, pizza, <laughs> literally anything I could put in my mouth, yeah. I did. Um, so it brings back that like sort of internal like, fuck, this is what I did. I was like, if I, uh, you know, cut back on working out or if I, you know, Oh, I should have not like it's like a reverse like healthy eating. I'm like uh -huh. I should eat all these fatty foods, um, so that I can give him this. But you're still fighting with yourself about like, oh, but I'll just give him formula, or mm -hmm. I'll just give. Him, it's this like you're damned if you you're, do, you're damned yes. if you don't. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, like too much information yeah. in your brain isn't good. <laughs> you don't your know which brain way to is go. Not good. <laughs> and I think people also forget like how how much it is you know like I didn't I didn't know like one is like so it's for those who haven't had a baby or haven't breastfeed um it's every two hours but every two hours but from when you started breastfeeding so let's say it's like yeah. 12 o'clock you start breastfeeding right and sometimes it would take me 30 minutes because I was like you and also they give you like right now it's in theme I don't think for the next baby I'll do this but it's like in theme of like clocking how long your brain, yeah. you know, so I'd be like clocking and it was like looking at a timer. It was so anxiety inducing of like, okay, it's been 15 minutes. Okay. Switch sides. You know, by the time you're done two hours from 12 o'clock, 12, what is two o'clock? Right. Mm -hmm. But then you're not finishing until almost one. So then it's basically, so it's like every hour throughout the yeah. day, I, there's that scene in garden state. <laughs> We love Garden State. Sorry, I do. Sorry, <laughs> your you know, love I, of Garden State. I I'm, love it. I'm I absolutely love, love your love of Garden I'll, State. It was probably <laughs> me referencing the same scene, but maybe I'll, I'll quote the movie. I don't care. Okay. Um, I rewatched it. Guess what? It held up for me. Sorry, everyone okay, says it doesn't, okay. but for Have me it did. Okay, I got to do a rewatch. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's like, "What are you talking about?" Um, 
But he's in this party scene or whatever, and they did this, like, you know, cinematic. So the whole, he's in a party the whole night, mm-hmm. and he's on the couch, and, like, the whole – it's, like, moving mm-hmm. everyone's around him. That's what I felt like those, like, first couple of weeks his breastfeeding. is like, yeah. I was on the couch, and I was just, like <gasps> – like, just, like, yeah. you know, just bre- – it was, like, uh, you know, and you're just, like, everything. And I felt like from that time I didn't move. And and it was anxiety inducing. Now I'm like, if I were to do it again, I'd be more relaxed. But I was like, is he getting enough? Is he getting enough? You know, because you can't yeah. see it. Mm-hmm. You know, you're like, is he even? I was like, I don't know if he's taking in the milk. I don't know. You know, and yeah. it's this pressure for them to gain weight, and it's like, it's really intense. Yeah. You know, and when I was at the <laughs> hospital, and it was all, all like a whole mess. But the nurses kept being like, make sure your breasts don't suffocate him, because oh, so casual. yeah. My so they're like, God. make sure. Because, you know, your boobs are so big that you make sure that your breast isn't hitting their nose. And I was like, so can you imagine how terrified you are? You just had a baby and you're like. It's one in the morning. You've and you're like, that's little what head, was and talking you're, about. And I'm like, and, and they're going to yeah, suffocate. Like, bleeding from the crotch. And you're also like, okay, well, if I relax I a for a minute. So yeah. You're just gonna, stomach like, is in. Oh, no. You're, ripped I'm apart. still like like getting, you know, I'm still yeah. stuck to the, the bed. Yeah. You can't right. lift things. Yeah. And so, and I heard actually like it's, they can't suffocate that way from your boob. Like they, their nose would go out, but they tell you that. So you're just in fear yeah. of like, is the boob blocking their nose? It's so intense. And all of yeah. a sudden you're like scared. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like scary and like yeah. a lot of work. I kept being like, wait, <laughs> oh, wait, I'm sorry. It's two hours from when you started. I thought it was from when, when you finished. finished. Yeah. So you have to understand for those first like two weeks or until they get to like yeah. a certain weight, it is just. It is just mm-hmm. your whole entire day and whole yeah. night. Oh, yeah. Or mm. they even cluster feed sometimes. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. remember mm. maybe lay in bed in the middle of the night and my son was on my boob for, because I had the timer, for a straight mm-hmm. three to four hours just like yeah. sucking and sucking and sucking. I was a low producer and I was like, he's too skinny. He's too little. He's like falling yeah. in his percentage of his weight. And just let him suck me into like a husk of a human being. And it was like not cool but I'm glad that we all ended up making the right decision for us like you had that neighbor and for me it was actually Rachel you know I met Rachel during my second pregnancy and knowing that she was a breast cancer survivor and knowing that June and Poppy are the best two humans on earth I was like I'm good like everybody needs that other parent that's like you are you know the benchmark for me to say like it's okay. And yeah. hopefully yeah. some of you feel like it's okay after listening to this. Yeah. yeah. If anyone's looking, cause I felt like there were so many times where I was looking for permission totally. when it comes to having a kid, it was like, I'm looking for permission. I'm looking for validation from someone else to say, regardless if it was breastfeeding, formula feeding, whatever, introduce baby led weaning versus purees, whatever it is, someone to say what you're doing is okay. Mm-hmm. As long mm-hmm. as it's making, as long as you can be a good parent, that's what makes you a good parent is making those choices for yourself. Honestly, if anyone's like questioning, like, am I a good parent? Should I do baby led weaning? Should I do formula? Should I do this? Should I do that? Mm -hmm. You're already a good parent. You care so much. Yeah. Right. You care so much. And it's better to be like a good enough parent than a perfect parent. Because one that doesn't exist. We're all just humans. But two, your kids are not perfect. They're also going to be good enough. So modeling a relationship where you're mm-hmm. allowed to make mistakes or go back on what you did or like the choices you made were wrong. You know, change your mind. Change it's okay to mind. change your mind when you get yeah. new information. Yes. I think that's actually so much better than like I just did everything right and everything worked out well for us mm-hmm. because human experience is not I did it all right and we're all happy. Human experience is frustration and sadness and sacrifice that doesn't work out. And so modeling mm-hmm. all of that for your baby and later your toddler and then eventually your preschooler, mm-hmm. I think is is right. Yeah. And I, I think like too is like I don't know if we're doing like a feminist debate about it because there's like a division of like, you know, it's healthy and it's natural and mm-hmm. all those things, which is like that part. And it's like yeah. that if that's your journey, like yeah. awesome. If you like enjoy it and like I do have friends that love it, like I'm happy oh, for you. Yeah. That's because they got the good hormones yeah, coming exactly. out. Yeah, right. And, and they're like, lucky, it feels so good. Yeah, I can get high <laughs> off of it. I would too. <laughs> and yeah. And it's a reminder too, I think of like your experience is not someone else's because I've definitely yes. been that person being like, you got to do it. And then I'm like, wait, that might not be their experience, yeah. you know, because mm-hmm. they were like encouraging me and I was like, I'm having a different experience. Yeah. And they couldn't understand what I was saying. But also in reverse, 
as like another feminist move, I'm like, I wanted it to be more equal with me and Miles, you know? And I think yeah. sometimes if you're the main breastfeeder and, and the main breastfeeder, there's only one of you. <laughs> um, and it, it naturally becomes all on you mm -hmm. and like they get only used to you. And I was like, I want, if he cries in the middle of the night to also be like, Miles can be there, for, you know, like yeah. that was important yeah. to me that it was, I feel like it's so much, as much as we've grown as a society, it's so much still on the mom, on the mom and the mom. And I have 100%. to fight to be like, no, it's both of us, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, I luckily I have a partner that like is, is of course down for that. But naturally stuff like that, it leans more on you. And you're like, well, he wants you. And it's like, no, yeah. <laughs> no. you know? Yeah. It, every, every couple or, you mm -hmm. know, gender or, you know, it's like all these, or how are you going together? And I just like, for me to, I just can't do it all on me. You know, like mm -hmm. some people I'm like, wow, look at you. But like, you know, Jillian's in daycare. Like I can't, I'm like it's too much to yeah. like, to be all on, you know, one person in my opinion. But some people are like, Awesome. I'm yeah. Good at that. I don't know. <laughs> well, I also think I saw this thing. I, I read an article on TikTok. Um, I saw someone talking on TikTok. Um, they were complaining. There was this big, like, I wouldn't even call it a controversy, but this some influencer had a baby and was competing in like Miss America or some pageant or something like that. Oh, and, I saw this. Yeah. So there was like a divide of on people. On TikTok. Yeah, I saw it on TikTok. There was like, I don't know. I was seeing all sides of different arguments and mm -hmm. I was like, I don't care. But also I was like watching it. So apparently I did care. Um, but this one creator like stitched it and was talking about um, on social media, it's really cool right now and really trendy to be like, I fucking hate breastfeeding. I hate being a mom right now. I hate this. I hate that. Like being very negative. And she was like, I, this is all I see. I can't believe this is where we've come as a society, blah, blah, blah. And someone very thoughtfully stitched with that video and was like, mm -hmm. the reason you're seeing more of this is because our parents' generation and our grandparents' mm -hmm. generation, nobody talked about anything. Mm -hmm. Like our mom's generation, they did not talk about postpartum depression. And like mm -hmm. people died. <laughs> I don't even know if they knew they had they PPD. Didn't, they didn't have they a name like for it. upset. <laughs> yeah, they didn't have a name for it. It's that was dangerous for children at the time. Uh -huh. It's dangerous now. But it's like, if you don't talk about those things and we're only hearing, this is beautiful. This is a wonderful experience. Um, you're going to be so bonded with your baby. Like, I love every single minute of motherhood is a joy. You're going to feel, I mean, I personally, when I feel people, I see that online, I'm like, okay, I'm a bad mom. Because oh, there are times totally. where I'm like, I am so, when Henry was like little, little, I was like, I'm bored out of my mind. All I'm doing is feeding you, changing you, and then you sit here and you can't even really look at me. You're you've you've got no depth perception, and we just stare at each other. And I'll be like, okay, it's been two days and I haven't gone outside. Yeah, it's been two days and I haven't talked to another adult mm -hmm. other than Keith. <laughs> like those things just aren't being talked about. I think people are seeing it more talked about now because well, we're a generation yeah. of people who love to talk. <laughs> we have to like share our stories because I had a really rough go of it right after the twins were born. Yeah. And I feel like I'm still making my peace with the fact that parenthood didn't go the way I wanted. Yeah. You know, that's hard. And for a while I was like, oh, my kids are going to be fucked up because of it. They're not. They're fine. They're great. But like I had ideas about being a mom and I didn't get them just because I was really sick. Yeah. Yeah. And my kid was in the NICU and another kid was at home and I was like dying. Yeah. <laughs> so like it just takes a lot to like rectify that. And if you hear that everyone else is dying too, you're like, oh, I have a better perception of knowing what this is going to be like, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I had pretty bad postpartum depression. And by the way, when I went to the doctor, I didn't say anything. No. I oh, didn't say the anything. stupid question. The questions they I was like, <laughs> it's also like, how are you feeling? I'm like, things are okay. You know, like <laughs> we're making it through. Yeah. And we're used to being polite and not saying that we're in pain, not talking about if we're sad, not yeah. talking about if we're angry because you're supposed to be a happy, happy. If, moms and, are happy. And it's this <laughs> yeah. guilt that you're not in bliss and like, this, I, I was at dinner this past weekend and we were meeting someone and they were talking about their brother just had a baby and um, we're all like having ramen and their brother just had a baby. 
And I was like, oh, we're there. Everyone's like, how are they doing? And they're like, oh my God, they're just so happy. And he's perfect. And they're just like, they just are doing so well. And you guys, I burst into tears. I had to be like, oh, the soup, it's so hot. You know, like I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and I felt Good so soup. bad because I was like, someone else's happiness made me devastated. And it was just yeah. grief that I was like, yeah. I didn't fucking get that. You know, like that was the hard, this was the hardest year of my life. Yeah. yeah. I'll downright say this was the hardest year of my life. Yeah. You know, like I woke up at noon before the baby. All right. <laughs> like I was like, well, what? That is sounds like a dream you were living out that the rest of us didn't have. That's yeah. well, amazing. No, it was probably not always great. But like <laughs> it was just like I was devastated that I was like, that's what I was expecting. And mm -hmm. to hear someone else say, and they're like, it was just like I didn't realize how heartbreaking it was to me that I was like, oh, I thought I would get that, you mm -hmm. know? And then I was yeah. like, but I every Every mom I talk to is like, that's not true. I know. I mean, like, yeah. uh, you know, I feel so sad for us that an immediate reaction is like, oh, like, is there pro is the problem with me? Whereas if I were to hear that mm -hmm. story from somebody, I'd be like, you're fucking sus. Like, I don't know yeah. trust you. Yeah. Oh, uh, the people who are unbelievably I know, happy. But yeah. they're like, we're just so in love and everything's going great. I'm like, bitch, you lying. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what yeah. I say internally, but then I'm like, but like, you can't, can you imagine if I was I've dinner? Seen. I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but no, yeah. like, I'm sure. Internally. Sure, <laughs> yeah. 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 College friends of mine had a baby and I went to visit them, you know, when the baby was like a couple weeks old the first time and I walked into their house and another college friend came. I've known them 20 years mm -hmm. and she was sitting there nursing her baby and he let me in and we walked back to the nursery and she was crying tears of happiness and I left there and looked at my other college, looked at my other friend who has a five-year-old, I have four-year-old, and I was like, I want to burn their house down. I love them <laughs> to death, but I want to set the place on fire <laughs> Yeah, because that is not anything I got out yeah. of it, you know? Oh, 100%. I want to throw my phone across the room when I see the TikToks. I finally had to do the not interested, not interested oh, yeah. of what to bring to like the hospital or like people oh, who yeah. like record Ugh. their golden hour. And I'm like, that is so beautiful. And I am so happy for people that get to do that. But yeah. in my mind, I'm like, s selfishly or not, I cannot take I myself out of mm -hmm. that. I was like, all that brings me back to is what I didn't get. And yeah. I want to be happy for other people. So I was like, I need this to be, <laughs> I need to just not see this because it's making me mad at people I don't know <laughs> for having a good experience. <laughs> yeah. You know? I, I thought everyone would come to the hospital. Everyone was like, I was like, oh, everyone come in. And I was like a mess. I had a wet tap. It was terrible. But it was like, oh. which is like brain fluid leakage because they did the epidural wrong. It uh -huh. was a total disaster. And my best friend took some pictures because you know you want. Uh -huh. and she, I was like, she saw them recently. She got them developed. She was like, yeah. You can't see them. <laughs> oh, She's like, it's so dark. It's bad. And yeah. I was like, don't show them to me. She's like, it's really upsetting. I was looking yeah. back at pictures of me and Henny when I had COVID because I was in, I yeah. was isolated from him. So I was looking back just at like birth pictures and it's my fucking swole. I mean, yeah. I was so swollen because I was leaking so much yeah. fluid that they just pumped me for three yeah. days. Fair, yeah. I was unrecognizably myself with this tiny, tiny baby that looked like when I look back at pictures of him now, I'm like, oh, this is why people kept like checking in on us. Cause at the moment in the time you're like, you're so beautiful. You're so beautiful. And now when I look back at him, I was like, you are so sick. Like this mm -hmm. is what a baby with no fat on them looks mm -hmm. like. Like you're so tiny. And like, I will never frame that picture. I will never print that picture. That will be something that I take a mental image of. <laughs> but I remember having friends who like had makeup on and like were like this beautiful picture with their baby. And it's like, you have this expectation of what it's supposed to be. And you're like, I didn't get that. I want that. I'm I know. Mad. And good for them. But the rest of us need to talk about it because that's not, uh, none of us know how it's going to go. The doctors yeah. don't know how it's going to go. It's like a live event. And I don't know, like we just like, I had some preparation for like, oh, they might be early, they might be little, whatever yeah. you did too. But then I wasn't prepared to miss golden hour. I wasn't prepared to be separated. No. And yeah. there's something that goes on and it's like my logical brain knows that that is bullshit. Like my logical yeah. brain knows that Henry being on my skin for an hour after birth 
has no effect on his rest of his life, but there is no way I will ever, I don't think my head will, it's separate. It's so yeah. separate. I'm like, I want it so badly, even though I know it's so unimportant in the grand scheme of like bonding and like being mm -hmm. with your baby. But, but it's all that expectation that you have. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. The first thing I would do if I had an extra hour in my day would be to read a good book and then take a nice nap. I feel like I'm always looking for ways to relax or slow down time a little bit. And a lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. The question is, time for what? The best way to squeeze that special something into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. And that's what therapy can help you find. Here you can sit with us. We absolutely love therapy, having someone impartial to just kind of chat about your day. It's really nice to just get those feelings out. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash sit with us today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash sit with us. You're allowed to want what you want. Like if you yeah. want a scheduled C-section and have hair and makeup done for, you know, that golden hour picture. That'll be like, my next yeah. one. Go, go, <laughs> go, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get a glam squad. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll bring and you then when light. Julian looks <laughs> back, he'll be like, why weren't you like that for me? Yeah, and like, I'll be like, it was the worst day <laughs> of my life. <laughs> yeah. um, but... Yeah, I would think we talk about more of the negative experiences mm -hmm. because like, you know, I, I can't watch Rachel cry. I will cry for her. I don't mm -hmm. cry about myself um, because it's we can like, get into that. what if, <laughs> yeah. what if that um, Another episode okay, maybe? Wait, uh, <laughs> different episode. Yeah, yeah. Nobody messes with Rachel. <laughs> um, but we have to talk a little bit more about the negative experiences, even though parenthood also brings you soaring joys is because God forbid we lose someone like in terms of maternal mortality or, you know, postpartum depression mm -hmm. or like health scares, like actual health scares. It's like yeah. we need to shine a light on these things so that you're more aware, like if my blood pressure drops, what does that mean? If I can't breastfeed, if it is hurting so much, what does that mean? And like, yeah. instead of just bearing down and sucking it up, like what if there's something medically wrong or, or mentally wrong that you need to take care of so we don't lose another mom? And so 100%. yeah, people don't suffer in silence. Yeah. Also, people trying to decide to have kids, they should know this. Yeah. They should know this. Like, I didn't know any of this. Because you're not going to feel alone. For me, it's like, yeah. I don't know, maybe because I'm a community person, but yeah. like, you know, like, I I don't like feeling alone mm -hmm. and or like, oh, I'm experiencing something so different. And you do, you're like, yeah. oh my God, is it me? Mm -hmm. You know, instead of being like, it was those moms that were like, you're okay. Well, also, you know? is it me? But like, uh, is this... Is this one of the avenues that is something you're going to go down that's usual? Like I, whenever I just told Skylar and then I told Erica, like parents, other parents in the mm -hmm. office, they were giving their kids antibiotics for the first time mm -hmm. since uh, they have babies and they had ear infections. So I was like, oh, by the way, full body rash is not a part of an ear infection, which it usually isn't. Yeah. Because when I gave the twins their first antibiotics ever as babies, Poppy broke out into a full body rash. And I just kept giving it to her because I thought it was the ear infection. And it turns out she was highly allergic. Oh, wow. And so I was like pumping her full of like yeah. something that was poisonous to her. And I just didn't know until my mother-in-law FaceTimed me and was like, get that baby to a hospital. I was like, this isn't for the ear infection. She was like, no. And I was like, holy shit. So now when people are like, oh, we just picked up amoxicillin. I'm like, if By the there's way. a rash. <laughs> It's not the disease. So yeah. just like, that's just one example, but like any of this. If you're someone who's never dealt with anxiety or depression, even if you're not the one physically having the baby. There oh, yeah, is, by the you way, non-birthing partners can yes. get postpartum depression too. 100%. You need to be yeah. like looking at yourself and looking at how you feel and looking at your partner. If you're doing it by yourself, looking at yourself and being like, is this my baseline or is it not? And yeah. being okay telling someone, hey, I'm having a really... I'm having this feeling every time I breastfeed because mm -hmm. it is that is more common is 
those hormones mm-hmm. coming out and either feeling that euphoria or that dread. Mm-hmm. And if you don't know that, like, why don't they tell you that when you're leaving? You're like, by the way, sometimes when you breastfeed, you'll this will happen. Or the the shakes after birth. Who did? Who doesn't tell I you had, about the I shakes? I had heard about those. I don't. I don't think I, I got. I hear about the shakes. Oh my god! I thought what was happening to me was the shakes, and then it turned out I was convulsing. I wasn't just shaking. Oh, okay. but I, I was heard shaking about in the there shakes. like in there with needles <laughs> like I, I'm like I can't, can't stop. stop I don't I don't know if it's oh, wait, me in labor right after, right after. I mean oh. there is the shaking in the labor, labor I think because they were the, putting so much yeah. stuff in me but it's like right? your adrenaline and your hormones oh, wow, that you wow. can just start shaking yeah, and if you're you don't not, know that's gonna happen you're like what the fuck it's, it's you're not in your right mind no there's no. like chemically in your brain truly like unbelievable amounts of like chemicals, hormones, adrenaline, whatever. It's crazy. I remember though I was crying because my brain was leaking and um, <laughs> and <laughs> my, LOL. my friend on Julian's birthday were like, congrats, it's been a year since your brain fluid was leaking. Oh, <laughs> was, Thank you. God. Um, but <laughs> when it was happening, I was crying and the nurse was like, you're a mother now, no more crying. <gasps> they said that to me. So I started shaking and I handed a baby off and I started convulsing and I was just sobbing. And she was like, you got to be strong for your babies. No more crying. You got to be strong for your babies. And I was like, I think I'm dying. Oh, like I was yeah. hemorrhaging. My I was like, bleeding. God, you got to be kidding me. Docs, you got to be strong for your babies. By the way, like I am shocked. Mm-hmm. I, I gave birth at PIH Health, formerly known as Good Sam. They were great. Um, <laughs> but that's terrifying. Yeah, that's yeah. That's terrifying. That's terrifying. Babies, like, you can't cry. You got to be strong. I wanted to be like, okay with me if they cry. I can cry. Yeah. yeah. Also, I'm like, they're they don't know what's going on. Also, also, they were just born, and I don't even see them in the room anymore. So what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, and you're hell? so tired. And I hadn't eaten or slept because I had like this. These all these different yeah. things. Yeah. And then you're like not allowed to eat until you've like like passed gas. But I was like so out of it. I was like, I don't know if I have. So I just kept not. So it'd been 60 hours since I've eaten or slept. So I was just like a a disaster, you know? And then early, I was like, I don't know if I farted. (laughs) And And someone's like, oh, and then feed your baby with your boobs. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. yeah, Or sticks the pump on you. And you're like, I don't know what's happening. Well, even talking about these horror stories, like uh, at least I, I'll speak for myself. I came from a privileged place where I worked for a company that gave me 12, 13 weeks of parental leave and beyond supporting each other as moms, like our government needs mm-hmm. to support each other because yes. you may have a terrible birth experience. And what if you don't have any parental leave whatsoever. Or let's say you're in a situation where like you would like to breastfeed or chest feed, but you don't get enough time for your pump breaks. Mm-hmm. Or if you've chosen to formula feed and you know, you're know you only supported with WIC and food stamps to get your formula, and then you get to Target and there's a formula shortage and you can't buy the specific yeah. formula uh-huh. because you don't have the money and your WIC stamps only allow you to get certain brands. like. It's just so much pressure already without, you know, all of the financial constraints or corporate constraints or legal constraints Mm -hmm. in feeding our babies. Like, Mm -hmm. what about all of the parents who are stuck in this situation where, like, can't breastfeed because I don't get my pump breaks and I also can't buy formula because they're out and I can't afford it. Yeah. And so it's a huge, huge issue all around besides just women supporting women. It's oh. like systems need to support well, parents. Yeah, of course. A thousand yeah. percent. A thousand percent. Fuck the system. I mean, the system is not built for us. We no. realize that, right? The system is not here to serve us. No. How did you feel about weaning, Becky? I had slowly started weaning. I I think the most guilty I ever felt was when I stopped feeding throughout the night. Mm-hmm. Once he was sleeping through the night, I was like, I'm not pumping. I'm not feeding. I am sleeping. Which, by the way, a yeah. little tip to all the formula, <laughs> formula curious out there. <laughs> you formula feed your baby. They sleep through the night much sooner. Like much, much sooner. Yeah. All the adopted kids I know who are all in formula, <laughs> the Junes and Poppies, two months, those babies are going eight hours because formula <laughs> fills you up. Yeah. People Good ask stuff. me how I sleep sleep trained, slept trained yeah. my kids. And I was like, well, the first one was this whole ordeal. And the second with formula, I'm like, she just drained herself. 
That's what I say about Henny. I'm like, he just figured it out. And mm -hmm. he just did it on his own. Um, but we were already introducing um, frozen breast milk mm -hmm. because I did not want to buy a deep freezer. I was like, I am going to stop pumping when the guest house freezer is full and I will I will pump no more. I was like, that is an ungodly amount. Our power went out probably a week ago. <gasps> and I was Googling all the things about like how long it would take to get the power back, like how long milk could be in there before he couldn't use it anymore. And like looking at it and seeing the hours of pumping that that milk was, was mm -hmm. like, yeah. if it, like there was one time I left a bag on top of the freezer and I just started crying when I saw it later. Cause mm -hmm. I was like, that's, that's easily 24 hours of my life Ugh. was spent oh my pumping that milk or th whatever the amount of time it was. That was like waste. It's waste. I couldn't use it. I gave it away. I tried to find people who wanted it. I put it on my hair. Gave it away for not feeding babies. For not feeding babies. I didn't give it to anyone that was going to eat it. I was like, do you have a rash? Try my breast milk. <laughs> You know what? Do you on TikTok shop. Why not? And my friend brought over some frozen breast milk from like a couple yeah. years ago when Junie had a rash recently. I was like, yeah, I'll put like, it in the bath. Let's why go. not try it? Uh, I mean, the truth is the child had cellulitis. She had strep in her skin, so Aww. that wasn't going to cut it. But right. yeah. was yeah. it soothing? Sure, maybe. Who yeah. knows? Like, it wasn't hurting the situation. We also no, got her course, antibiotics. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think it was that sort of... Time was more stressful than like the the like ceremony of it being the last feed. I wanted to be like I had weaned over months. By the I'd way, I'd gotten rid of, gotten rid of, gotten rid of. When gotten we rid of. gave them their last bottles of formula, I sobbed big tears. I gave it to <laughs> each of them. I didn't let Watson feed one, and I was just like sobbing. And he was like, "They're thirteen months. It's over." And I yeah. was like, "My baby, yeah." And it's just like it was another expectation thing where like. It was like the more the last morning I was going to breastfeed. Like God knows how much that baby was getting. Like we were giving him formula mm -hmm. right after he breastfed. So I was like, "How much are you getting? This is yeah. just for me right now." Um, and it was the morning we got skunked, so we had to leave our oh, no. <laughs> house. And then I was like, I was like, okay, tomorrow, tomorrow will be the day I, is my last breastfeeding day. So I fed him in the morning, and then tested positive for COVID like three hours later. And Look I was like. Go. I was like, I breathed all over his face. I put him, I like felt so guilty because I was like, I put but him so timing. close to me when he didn't need it. Know. You know what I mean? Because I was like, he was getting yeah. his full nutrition out of the formula. But I was like, fuck, if I had given it, which it, thankfully it did not pass to him. But, um, but yeah, the antibodies did. The yeah, antibodies did. True. And I did one pump session because okay. I was like, okay, I'll give him and that is antibodies from when I had yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. like the main benefit is getting those antibodies. antibodies. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so I did one pump there, but it was sort of like a cold turkey uh, mm. cutoff of the breast. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna well, feed you, you all for eight days. <laughs> I'm not even gonna hold a bottle to your mouth. The universe knew. It was like, it, girl, go. It did. And there was this, um, there's this account that I followed like right when he was born. It was called Dear Nikki Mama, and it was like for parents who were uh, had Nikki babies of just like I don't know people sharing stories and things like that. But one of the things that they posted was like you can be so happy and so in love with your healthy baby that you currently have, but still grieve how they came into the world or the choices you didn't get to make when they were little mm -hmm. and like the expectations that you had. So it's like one of those things where I'm like, oh, I'm so happy honey is like thriving. And like, there's so many babies in worse NICU situations than he was in. But like, yeah, the expectation was we we're going to have this beautiful bonded moment of, this is the last time, Henry. And Henry's like, give me the fucking bottle, lady. <laughs> yeah. I'm starving. I'm so hungry. Get out of here. Get it, away from me with that. <laughs> it's just priming us for the paradox of being parents of like, they're separate human beings. They're going to want mm -hmm. different things. They're going to challenge us. And our expectations aren't always what's going to end up happening. Yeah. And, uh, oh, 100%. So yeah. Just keep our expectations in check. I feel like I often tell new parents, like, don't forget the baby's opinion is kind of the one that matters the most. So your yeah. baby might be sleep trainable. They might not. They might not like nursing. They might only like bottles. You might have bought all of the Komotomo bottles, but they only drink out of Dr. Brown's. It's like, <laughs> it's just not up to you. Yeah. And I have two in almost identical environments, you could argue. And it just ain't up to me. One's a great sleeper. One's a great eater. 
They're yeah. both sassy as fuck. Like I just like it's not my. <laughs> Where do they get that from? Yeah, I can't imagine. It's why do so they have weird. such strong opinions? And why it's do they so cry weird. so much? <laughs> hey, they're in touch with their emotions. Those sweet angels. They're Pisces. Pisces, Pisces girls. <laughs> um, Rachel, I was wondering if you could speak to because you, the three of us, went from breastfeeding to formula feeding. Mm-hmm. You always knew you were going to mm-hmm. formula or donor milk. Donor milk. So yeah. What was what was that like? What was the experience of like looking up the information and having all this time? You had nine months out. to figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Well, we really have to rewind. Um, the first time I got breast cancer, I just did a lumpectomy, and then mm. my breasts were pretty intact. And then the second time I had breast cancer, it was in the same breast. And I remember I was like 26 and I was in the plastic surgeon's office and I was like, well, if we don't take both breasts, can I breastfeed out of just one? And she was like, you technically probably maybe, but like not enough to sustain a baby. Yeah, Certainly not fast forward to sustain twins. Um, But like even at 26, when I was like dying, right? Like I was like, but can I breastfeed my future children that I'm not even having for a long time? Because what is my body? What are we good for as women? You know, like uh, I am very maternal and I do Mm -hmm. love babies. So that's part of it. But like, also like, what the fuck? Yeah. You just gotta, you gotta be like, well, if you're not alive to have babies, then breastfeeding out of one boob doesn't really matter. Does it? Yeah. So Then when we got pregnant um, with the twins, I was really, really, really set on getting donor milk. And donor milk is very, very expensive and hard to come by. We mapped it out and it was something like to get enough milk bought from milk banks for infant twins was something like $25,000 a month. Oh, my God. I think we did the math on a podcast once about per feeding how much a donor milk feed yes, would be and it was something like expensive. 15 to 20 dollars a feed when babies eat per baby when they're eensy eensy they're eating all day yeah we hundreds of dollars a day when june and poppy were first born well two weeks later once i was out of the er and surgery and um the babies were out of the nicu and we were all home we were feeding them when i was alone with them i was only feeding them because they would take 30 to 40 minutes to eat and they're eating every hour and a half. So once you feed two babies, Mm -hmm. that's an hour and a half. Um, We were going through so much milk. So we uh, could not do that. Um, We got milk from a bunch of different places, um, including like I had a friend on the East Coast. We paid like $1,000 to ship all the milk in her deep freezer overnight on dry ice. Um, We tapped into a couple of breastfeeding Facebook groups in LA and I got strangers Mm. milk. I would go to their house and empty out their deep freezer. We had a deep freezer yeah, and we um, hooked it up to a generator because that wasn't happening to us. I texted Rachel about it to be like, okay, so if we do get a deep freezer, like (laughs) what's the deal? Um, I was so, and my, I had friends who were like, you can give them formula. Like I was formula fed as an adult, like whatever. And I was just like, convicted that I didn't want that choice taken away from me. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you get so few choices that you're like, this is what I want. And then I had to go through the hospital. So you can't bring in your own donor milk into a hospital. Mm -hmm. Um, They only go through the NICU. It has to be pasteurized, which obviously it isn't otherwise. Mm -hmm. And there's like all these rules around it. And so I had to like dig in with the hospital ahead of time to get them to agree to give us donor milk through the NICU. It was like this whole ordeal. Of course, then um, Poppy gets sent to the NICU while I'm still like hemorrhaging on a table somewhere. June gets sent to the nursery and they give them both formula, like hour one, yeah. day one, golden hour. They get formula. It's out of your hands. They were like, yeah. oh, right. It does say donor milk. OK, we'll switch. You know, like it just doesn't go the way you thought. And we gave them donor milk for the first four months. And then the first time we traveled with them, I gave them formula for the first time. And then it also ended up being the first time they slept through the night. Um, Mm -hmm. Was that $100,000 then? No, it wasn't because I got it from friends. And I got it from like these people who would have otherwise given their milk to a milk uh, bank. Yeah. Um, 
But where NICUs get their milk and how you buy it from a milk bank mm-hmm. is the same place. And it's pretty limited and it's super high cost. Yeah. But I was just like sold on it, you know? And I had a couple of beautiful moments. Like my friend Audrey came down from San Francisco and fed my children via a bottle her breast milk after she had just nursed her own baby who was mm-hmm. only a couple months older. And we both just cried. And, Aww, you know, like yeah, there beautiful. was some loveliness to it. Yeah. yeah. But I also was just like, I won't be cornered into this decision. Now, mm-hmm. were I to go again, I would just do formula, you guys. <laughs> but <laughs> you, you, totally you have understand. to try things out for yourself. Yeah, you know, yeah. like you already have so many anxieties. You have very few choices, and et cetera. And like if it's affirming for yourself to like jump through those hoops and mm-hmm. go through it, then because like that's what like, you need to do. Because how you feed them, how you sleep them, mm-hmm. it's basically all you got to influence their lives, right? Yeah. Like in the beginning. Yeah. Like I said, when they're 12, we won't, remember like there's a great meme that's like well my son just got a face tattoo so go ahead and formula feed yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean like shit's gonna happen but yeah. I understand you you go through any hoops to make it being like what's the best for them uh-huh. you know Ooh. like I'll do anything if and it's I even a little bit choice. better yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah having that choice yeah and you're scared all the time you're so, so scared like, always you're just, scared just, you're just do, always scared do do what Makes you feel a little less scared. It's okay. Yeah. And yeah. It is. Like, I remember being like, there's an old man screaming at me, you know, like, because mm. he's so tiny and like, uh-huh. <laughs> old man. Yeah. You're, they just look like little old men. And yeah. you're like, ah, but it was like, I was like, it hit me with a responsibility. Like, this is so scary. And Miles and I would wake up in the night being like, oh my God, is he going to make it through the night? You know, just because yeah. it was oh, like, you're just so scared. It's like mm. a, a fear I never had experienced for, yeah. a sense of responsibility and like, oh my God, this is real life. You I know? really yeah. think being in charge of someone else's life to that extent yeah. makes you worried. I I don't think I was that anxious before, but the anxiety, the rage, and the worry found their way into my life. It was like the line, the witch in the wardrobe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to parenthood. Yeah, yeah. We, and we had, you know, Poppy was in the NICU, and then we got to bring her home, and then we had to readmit her to the NICU because she wasn't okay, and handing oh. my baby back off to be safe somewhere mm-hmm. else was like, unbelievably like anxiety producing yeah that's so hard we went to a normal pediatrician appointment with both girls and she was like you're gonna need to walk over to the NICU now and I was like no oh you don't want to hear that no oh my god no I no and then they you know they take her they took her little clothes off they put an IV in I was like oh my god I can't believe this is happening again we just did this yeah Yeah. you're like we're out we're free and also I'm not capable of taking care of her right now yeah, I feel like also on the way out of the NICU, you are running. Like you're running before they say something that makes you have to stay longer. You're like, we're getting out of here. And the nurses are like, we're going, we're going. And so like the idea of being like, no, you have to come back. Like I would have fallen on the floor. So just to reiterate, <laughs> fed is best because is alive best. is best. Alive alive is the best. Yes. <laughs> Feed your babies. Yeah. Feed your babies. But Nobody yeah, cares I think we were crazy. We were bananas. We were out of our minds. We had a whole system to go from deep freezer to regular freezer to fridge to heat it up. And like, yeah. you knew how long each thing. It's 24 hour. It's like one year, 24 hours, 24 hours, 24 hours. And you're like, you know, it was a full time job. It was a full time job. Yeah. Being a full time job, Joey, you had a full ass kid before you had another full ass kid. <laughs> Rachel got I know two. I didn't get them Rachel at the same time. Rachel got two once. <laughs> we got one at a time. Two children. Right, exactly. Two. And so when. How? <laughs> How? <laughs> there are times I was breastfeeding where I was like, we're pretty, you know, getting more solidified in our decision mm-hmm. to have one kid. And like, there are times where I was feeding Henry. And I'd be like, how would I do this if there was another human over there? There's another baby. How do you well, do that? Luckily, they have a dad. <laughs> Um, it's kind of like, who's taking care of the baby? I'm like, yeah. their father. Mm-hmm. Um, no, but it was very much the plan of like, since breastfeeding was so physical for me yeah. when the second was born, that it was very much like, I'm going to be on like breastfeeding mode. So you should be really active with our older one. He was already yeah. three at the time. So yeah. 
he obviously didn't need to be fed from my boob every <laughs> two hours also. Um, but it does come with a little bit of territorial or jealousy or a little mm -hmm. bit of wanting to reverse back to being a baby. And so I think what was great about stopping at five or six months and I wasn't so like attached at the boob to a baby was yeah. that my son could have a lot more mommy time like Aww. at around six months when I stopped and it was a lot more equal like bottle feeding and formula feeding yeah. my son was able to be like I am mommy's baby and Romy is daddy's baby you know <laughs> it was like a full like switch of Get like it, the baby had me for uh -huh. so long yeah. that he was like go <laughs> you know, yeah. and he would want to snuggle and everything like that. Aww. And so it's just understanding that you're a team if you have a team mm -hmm. and making sure that it's like that one to one ratio. I don't know how people with three or more children do it. I couldn't. <laughs> but yeah, it was division of labor. <laughs> yeah. We love to see that. Division I of saw labor. a TikTok recently it. of a woman with two little kids who was like, I didn't realize before I love that we're all mom TikTok, obviously. She was like, I didn't <laughs> realize that we would stop operating and doing things as a family and start operating and doing things as two teams. Yeah, like, I saw My too. husband and I are no longer cohesive. We're yeah. now divided. And I feel like we've been doing that since the beginning. We got this one-to-one -one ratio going on, yeah. and it's hard. Sometimes it's really hard to, like, it's much harder to do things all together or to be like, you take the kids so I can have one second and mm -hmm. then I'll take them so you can do that work thing. And, you know. Well, so this idea of like, yes, we all know our babies best. When that baby first comes out of you, like I remember the nurses would tell me like, you know your baby best, you know what you do. And I'm like, I literally don't know this person. <laughs> I, I was like, you took him away right after he was born. I see him for a couple hours a day. You know this. this you know, you know what's this best for this baby. Best. I don't even have a medical degree. I can barely do math in my head. <laughs> I don't know what's best for him. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? You took this baby away. Like, so having two and then having to figure out their individual personalities or their individual preferences or, you know, things like that is like, well, seems like a lot. I, Seems like a lot. Here's why I think two is harder than one for me. For me. <laughs> There's and more than it's one. It's all of them. hard. It's all hard. <laughs> that's, that's it. <laughs> but when you have one kid, you can just react to them. Oh, they're hungry. We'll oh, feed yeah. them. Oh, they're tired. We'll nap them. Oh, they want to play a silly game. I'll be the funniest person you've ever seen. Has everyone in this room seen Becky rap at Henry to get him to to, to <laughs> laugh? You. <laughs> um, but when you have two, you're anticipating who's going to be crankier, who's going to be hungrier, mm, who needs uh -huh. what first. Because if I am alone with two babies or two toddlers, I need to get to that person first and anticipate and predict what's going to happen so that then I don't have two children who I can't physically react to at the same time. Mm -hmm. So when I'm out and about with two babies that need bottles, I'm like, OK, well, who's who's going to do this, who ate first, who had a poop, who did what. And mm -hmm. I can't just like be present. I, I'm like planning, you know, a battle all the time. Here's where it's easier though. Mm -hmm. You just give way less of a fuck. <laughs> you're like, you're crying. Well, your brother wants his ass wiped. So like just fucking deal, you, right, you right, know? Right. And, yeah. or, or it's like if someone wants attention, it's like, I can't give it to you. I'm stuck here breastfeeding or whatever it yeah. is like go grab an ipad <laughs> you yeah. know you're yeah. just like yeah. whatever yeah. like all of those worries that i had like with a timer or like yeah. sleep training or whatever it just all went out the door when they're consecutive yeah. because you're mm -hmm. just like we're you're fine you will be alive at the end of the, uh, <laughs> the day you will be fed mm -hmm. at the end of the day yeah. it's like cool like you know, that's why I wouldn't, if you're choosing to have a second, I wouldn't be too afraid of it. There are days where like, what did we do? <laughs> and then, you know, you see them have a really adorable sibling moment and you're like, oh my God. Yeah, I mean, you know, that you, part is yeah, really cute. That, that's why it's like all of the choices you get to make, you don't get to make like, you're going to be okay. Everyone, yeah. you're going to be okay. I think that's the moral of the story when it comes to, I mean, our, our broader topic of breastfeeding or feeding your baby today is like it's okay yeah <laughs> whatever you're gonna do is okay and if you need someone in your life to validate or give you permission for that 
it's us. We've, what, we've done it and we'll give you, it to you. <laughs> what could you have each said to your past selves who are on the verge of having a baby that would have like eased the road for you? I think it's okay to help you, you know, like, yeah. like helping me, like he was just a little baby. If I need, like I needed break time. I know some people are like, I can't have 30 minutes. I needed to like go out and yeah. like, you know, be a little bit by myself in the beginning. Uh -huh. And luckily we had Miles's parents and, you know, like so mm -hmm. many people helping, but I think I felt guilty every time I left, like so guilty. Mm -hmm. I was like, Oh my God, I can't believe I'm gone for an hour, you know, or like, mm -hmm. The breastfeeding, I wish I stopped earlier because I just wasn't enjoying it. I wish I stopped right away, to be honest. Um, and I think just being like helping me was helping him and like he was going to be fine if I helped myself. Yeah. You know, but I kept being like sacrifice me, just push through, push through, push through, push through. Why is that our go to? Like if I just put my head down and get through it, uh -huh. then everyone else will be okay. It's survival. Yeah. You know, at survival, you know, so it's like, if I just, I can bear it, I can bear it, I can bear it. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, you don't have, it's okay, you know, and like, you still deserve things, you yeah. know, you don't have to, you're going to suffer a little. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's true. I'm not going to be like, don't suffer at all. You're just going to have, like, you're up all night and yeah. it is difficult, but I think to be like, give yourself a break a lot more, you know. What about you, Becky? <sighs> that's tough. I'm trying to think. What I would have told myself. I don't know, probably somewhere along the same lines of like, it's okay to not do certain things. Like mm -hmm. you don't have to be so, I get in my head of like, so I need to get to six months. Um, and with the pumping and the breastfeeding, I do wish I was a little less like, I wish I was a little more relaxed with it. Where I was like, I had a time, like I had the timer and I was like, it's been three hours on the nose. He needs to eat right now. Like it was very... My time was centered only – your time in general is centered around their, when they're eating, when they're little. But I was, like, on a clock. And my day was only yeah. devoted to the clock. So I feel like I was waiting. I was like, I can't wait to be done with this clock. I can't wait till he can do X. And I think Miles has said it before. Maybe you've said – maybe you've both said it to me. But you've been like, don't spend too much time worrying about this phase that they're in right now. Like, you really want to get to that next phase – but like you kind of then stop enjoying the phase that they're in, mm. if that makes sense. Like his little slug phase, I was like, God, I cannot slug wait phase. until this kid can smile yeah. at me and laugh at me and and we can make these memories. But now when I look back, I'm like, oh, maybe I should have enjoyed the time of just being able to cuddle him and like mm -hmm. he, he would just sleep on me for hours. But you're in it, you know, because I see that too. You I see my see friends with newborns now and I'm like, they're so sweet. And I, I remember there, they people would say they're so sweet. I'm like, yeah, whatever, <laughs> you know, like you can't, it's yeah. like, it's like talking to your 20 year old self. Like I couldn't talk yes. to my 20 year old self. Mm. She had to go with her. She had to go through, like you yeah. know, like to get to me. Now I had to go through that yeah. crap. Then you yeah. know, so it's like that's why I'm like maybe in a second I could, but who who knows? Yeah, you know, you never know how much you. I'm even still in that now because like he's one and glorious, and it's much mm -hmm. easier and better mm -hmm. for me. But I still am like, when can we have an intellectual conversation? You know, like I'm like, yeah. when can you put a sentence yeah. together? I'm like, <laughs> you keep pointing to things, and I don't know what. And I'm like, this is frustrating <laughs> for me. I want to have a relationship with my son. Who are you? What's yeah. going on? Well, yeah. I look back on them, yeah. like just pointing and grunting. I'm like, with your cheeks and your uh, little yeah. falling over, and your your hand is chubby. Yeah, he, he oh. is doing this thing whenever he because I was really insistent about the barn animals. I don't know. I don't know why we have to learn barn animal sounds, but they really put it in. But when he sees a chicken anywhere, like mm -hmm. a picture of chicken, mm -hmm. he goes. Like, Oh, it's the cutest thing. It's because I always go, <laughs> but he just goes, <laughs> and then if I know that, I'm like, where's the chicken? Where's the chicken? <laughs> there's a chicken in She's here. She's scared. She's like, like, there's a chicken. There's the chicken. <laughs> the chicken is nearby. Yeah, but, but I know that. I think that's how. I, it's like honestly, if I'm really thinking, about, I'm always like that in my life too. Though I'm like, yeah. oh yeah, what's the next thing? Like, what's when's the next yeah. gig I'm gonna get? What's the next thing? You know, like, mm -hmm. and I'm like, it's yeah. really hard to be like, okay, I'm enjoying right now. Yeah. It's a really hard thing, and I'm cons I'm still in it. I'm still yeah. like, no, no, no. Once he gets to preschool, that's it, you know. And yeah. Like, and I know it's never ending. I try to like when I look back at my kids from a year ago, which I do a lot. I'm always like, oh my god, look at how young they look. So then I try to say, okay, they are four on the verge of twenty turning five. This time next year, I'm gonna think how young they yeah. look. Yeah. So let me try and enjoy this little phase and what all it has because they will never be like four, almost turning five. Yeah. 
again. And there's so much to like love here. And because when I look back, I feel so nostalgic and I try to remember, I'm going to feel that way about this right now. Yeah. Next year. Yeah. You know, beautiful. What's your advice, Jojo? Knowing that it will be hard, Mm. but that it shouldn't be dark. I love, I love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love Um, that. And like you said, there's just no limit. You keep pushing. And so remembering that phrase and allowing yourselves to have limits and having boundaries, I think would be great knowledge to have when I was pregnant and when I first had a baby. Because that's something I had to retroactively learn through my second pregnancy of like, went to the dark place. So let's Mm -hmm. not do that anymore. Like having, you know, having your tribe to tell you like that seems concerning or, you know, recognizing that in yourself to, to get help. You deserve help. I love that advice. That advice is so good. And also breastfeeding does hurt. I don't care what <laughs> yeah. they tell you. Well, in the beginning, it's, it's uncomfortable uh-huh. always. So, so if, hard if you're the beginning. like, oh, they say it's you know, it's not supposed to hurt. It's not supposed to be uncomfortable. It can be. It can hurt and be uncomfortable. Yeah. In the mm-hmm. first couple of days, I had to take breaks because I was like, they're like almost bleeding so badly oh. that we had to put ne- oh. nipple shields on them because it was like yeah. I was like, or we'd like have yeah. to do one bottle feed because I was like, they hurt so much. Yeah. It, yeah. You do get over that. That's like just a yeah. couple of days. And it's brutal. But it's hard, but it shouldn't be dark. dark. You shouldn't yeah. be bleeding. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And Annie Ray Ray, what do you want to leave the people with? Advice for your younger mommy self. I'm trying to think because like you could, I mean, I knew formula was an option. You couldn't have convinced me. Mm-hmm. You also couldn't have convinced me that like I could see a life in a future without kids. And I could be convinced now, <laughs> you know, love you, June and Poppy. I mean, really... I think everyone gets something in birth and breastfeeding and the newborn days. It's not going to all be a hundred percent. So like, just know that. Mm -hmm. But I also think the baby has an opinion about this stuff. And sometimes it's just not in your control. And sometimes your body just has an opinion and it's not in your control. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't know if we could just like brainwash out of us all the things we've been taught and just sort of accept the things as they come Mm-hmm. rather than like trying to like grit our way through, I think we would all do much better about being like, oh, well, I'm going to the ER a lot this week. Maybe we should just give them formula. Mm-hmm. Donor milk's going to be $25,000. Well, guess what's not? Formula. So maybe we should just do that. Yeah. You know, rather than like, well, this is the idea I had, so I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I think being a little more accepting of your body's opinion, your individual circumstances, your baby's opinion would help all of us. Also you know? that Brezza formula machine. Really. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag. Uh, you not know, Sarah's code. Hashtag Sarah. Yeah, it's not a sponsor, but man, you press that button, it fills it up. <laughs> you know, we never got that. And oh, I'm, I'm sad. We're mixing <laughs> I'm sad for the you. old school <laughs> way. <laughs> the old school. I don't think we're, I could have done that. We're an old shake and swirl family. No, <laughs> even, I had never even heard of it till the girls were like a year old. And this nanny was like, oh, you don't have the instant machine? And I was like, mm. what is that? You're like an instant machine. Oh, yeah, you no just, one told me. How many ounces? It mixes it and heats it mm-hmm. already for mm-hmm. you. Wow. Look well, at it mommies. Go. I loved sitting with you today. Yeah. Thank you I love for letting us here. It was beautiful. It was so Where beautiful. can the people find you online to follow? And if you have anything you want to plug that's coming up? Um, you can follow me at PC Bond. <laughs> and yeah, I think on the, the, the platforms. <laughs> on the platforms. <laughs> on all the, all the places. Love. And I'm at Joey No Good on Instagram, but Neural Feral on TikTok. Yes, follow Joey if you want, like, funny and educational Mm -hmm. and really just everything. Mm -hmm. Um, She kind of hits all the marks for me. She's one of my favorite TikTok follows. 100%. Um, Becky is my most active mutual. (laughs) Because we both love Girl, I comment reading and I like TikTok everything. all the time. Yeah, <laughs> love the love. Um, but, you know, I don't have it ready yet. But as an autistic parent of autistic kids, I'm going to try to put together a lot more free resources for people. You know, once your kid gets out of the breastfeeding phase and 
maybe a pediatrician notices something or an educator notices something, um, we're going to have some resources for parents who are trying to help their neurodivergent so kids. Rad. I love that. And when that comes to fruition, you are 100% coming back here. Yeah. Oh, we are putting it on the calendar because you need to tell us all more about that because yeah. it's and so interesting. Uh, I need to come back because I'm obsessed with you all. I mean, in just yeah. period, you well, need to come yeah. back, period. <laughs> and I don't think we've ever heard in any iteration the story of you getting yourself diagnosed with autism. Yes. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. So Okay, let's just put that on the box Something now. to look forward to. Cool, okay. I manifested love. this. I love it. I'm in. <laughs> Down. And Ray Ray, where can oh, people follow everybody. you on the socials? Listen, this is the OG Arkle. I'm Arkle. I'm Arkle. I'm mostly on the gram. You know, I love posting photos on the gram. I'm an old millennial. We love it. We love yeah. you for that. Yeah. We're I mean, all old millennials. Here. We are. Let's embrace it. Yeah. Easy. All of our Gen Alpha kids. Gen Alpha. I think they might be beta. Beta? What? We're betas? Are because they? 2023, Alpha starts 2010. I feel like 13 oh. years. Oh, is that what it is? I, I don't know. I'm just guessing. Years. I think I it depends, know. right? Like boomers are really long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gen X is short. But it's like, but the millennials are like technically 81 to 1996? Three, 93? 96. Sound 96. off in the comments. Yeah. Sound yeah. off Tell in the comments. doesn't matter. But who knows? Maybe, yeah. Maybe Let us alpha, know. Yeah. Alpha beta is funnier. Yeah. <laughs> beta is <laughs> funnier. Beta is funnier. Beta is funnier. Beta is funnier. Beta is funnier. But yeah, maybe they'll be alpha. Who knows? Yeah. Imagine my older and be like, I'm alpha and you're a beta. <laughs> yeah. They're Stuck like, duh. Me. <laughs> duh. <laughs> Um, well, thank you all for sitting with us. As we said at the top, this was just our experiences with breastfeeding. So there are so many other experiences right. with feeding your babies. So look look out into the world. Talk to your friends. Talk to your parents. We should talk more about this. Moms and dads should not have to feel like they're doing something alone. Um, so if you are doing something alone, I hope you felt a little more seen by mm-hmm. us today. We see you. We think you're doing a good job. And yeah. we should do this again. I was going to say we'll see you next time, but this is kind of one-off. <laughs> okay. I was like, maybe we'll, we, do, we'll another do another mommy again. chat. Yeah. yeah. Do you're, you know, so- Over drinks. Oh, my God. A mommy happy <laughs> hour. Because you don't have to pump and dump anymore, Rebecca. <gasps> a girl I never pumped. I pumped and I saved. So we got baby bath water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Baby bath water For all the bags. rashes. Yeah, for the rashes. Or for my eternal youth. I'm in. Down. She can have the bath water. <laughs> All right, everyone, make sure you're washing your hands, peeing after sex, be nice to yourself, be nice to your servers, and fed is best. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yo! (laughs) Bye. Bye. Bye.